All right. So, my name is London Fletcher. I'm 11 years old. I'm president and founder of Black Kids Club, and my goal is to be a scientist. Grab a mic, Lemon. Oh. Am I not loud enough? I can scream. <laughs> oh, no, I so, since my internship in New Zealand, everything has changed for me. Uh, I've been working about 40 hours outside of school a week, and I'm just getting started. People are starting to take me seriously, finally. And no one did that before. So, I do a lot of research, but to fit the theme of scholarly advocacy, I'm going to be talking about my work as an advocate, uh, an advocate for the Southern Resident Killer Whales. So, right after Superpod 5, I formed the Blue Advocates Group. I got a trademark. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, the club's mission is to spread awareness about the plight of our oceans to kids and teens because as lots of the presentation before me have stated, we are the next generation. So our motto is advocacy through education. So it, I, my dad and I, we talked to the principal of my school and we were able to get it as an official club at our school. So in January 2017, my club, the Blue Advocates, had its first official meeting. There were a lot of kids that showed up, which was actually surprising because <laughs> say it was just really amazing to see that so many kids were actually interested in saving, try, trying to help our environment. And there were lots of guest speakers who came and talked to the club. Right here we have Chris Joyce, the Sea cool. Shepherd, talking to the club. And we were able to contribute to Empty the Tanks Day. Yay. So we all did a, this giant poster for Empty the Tanks Day, and it was taken down to Seattle for the, pro, for the big protest. And I um, just kind of got cut off, there. whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I had, during that time, I went to my first Japan Dolphin Day protest, <laughs> put on by Rachel Carberry. And it was definitely a lot. Because <laughs> uh, I had never watched The Cove. So, but it was definitely really good that people were seeing, seeing the posters of the dolphin slaughters. It, it's really important. Dolphins need a voice too. <laughs> and Noah has been a huge help in my journey to become a scientist. So, in November, I was invited to the NOAA labs by doctors Philip Clatton and Yulia Ivanchenko. They're not here today, I wish they would have been. And since then, they've become really good friends and amazing help with my research. And I've, since I want to go into acoustics, Dr. Catherine Birchock has been arming me with the proper tools. You can see in that Pelican case is a hydrophone. <laughs> so it was, they sent about over a hundred of these to fishermen in the Bering Sea to try to get some data on killer whales, citizen science. <laughs> that, that was the only one that came back. So thank you to her. <laughs> and in Seattle, we took our message that, that we need to save the Southern residents to Senator Patty Murray's office. So I was lucky enough since I am a kid, they let me in and they took my, uh, <laughs> they took my, the letter that I had wrote to Senator Murray. They, I was able to take it up to her secretaries and they said they gave it to her. I don't know if it actually got there or not, but but the other people protesting, Rachel, Rachel and all of them, they weren't even allowed to see the secretaries. They were, they were like asked to leave. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been, a lot of that, this is work. More work and more work. So in February, my dad and I went to the Ways of Wales workshop. It's, it's always very enriching. There's, <laughs> 
So I got about 10 pages of notes from that. And there are more symposiums and more, more notes. In July, before my internship, yeah, before my internship, the Center for Whale Research held a fundraiser event at Brickworks, and it's amazing. I, they raised a lot of money. I don't remember the exact amount, but I also won a scale model of K1 Taku. I won a scale model of his fin. Mm -hmm. in Super cool. And I held a memorial on San Juan, here in San Juan Island off the west side for Sonic. So he was two years old when he died, and so I held a memorial for him. And I also spoke at the Tacoma Rotary Club asking for our local leaders and business business people to aid us in our fight to save the southern resident killer whales and there I received a standing ovation. I, I really moved all the adults in the room and they, they said that they would try to help the southern residents so the more people the better. And that same day was the Hope for Orcas event and so there it was more of just the general public. It was held at the UW Tacoma, and Ken Balcom and Jim Waddell spoke. Also, I educated some a younger group of kids at the Langley Whale Center. There, they had a kids' day, and I was invited to speak there. And I, I told those those kids how how they can be advocates, and I showed them showed them some of my research equipment. And what was really funny for me was, so when I went to the Blackfish screening at the Edmonds College when I was six, the first question I asked was, how do we know what the orca are saying? And Howard said to me, well, London, if you figure that out, you'll be an amazing scientist. So what was funny for me was there was a little girl and she asked the exact same question I did. So I was able to get, give her the same answer. Same answer. <laughs> <laughs> and I, since you need a bunch of permits to, to study orca, because you need to get close to them if you don't want to study them, uh, I done research, I'm doing research currently, on the harbor seals in Bellingham, so that's where I live. So in June, June of this year, I signed a contract with the Port of Bellingham, sorry, the words aren't showing up. So there is a site where lots of harbor seals haul out, but you need access from the port to, if you want to go see it or else you get fined. Uh, so I signed a contract and secured site usage with them. And here is, no pictures please, here is a GIS map uh, made, from, made for me by Dr. Ivanchenko. So it's just of all the haul out sites so, in, in Whatcom County. And so far this guide to success has been really helpful. So step one is hard work. Step two is dedication. Did I mention hard work? <laughs> and so that's just briefing, but without further ado, I present to you my documentary, Walking in the Footsteps of Giants. You guys want to give Ingrid a call? Yeah. All right, let's see what she's been up to. Hello, Dr. Visser giving London an internship in New Zealand was so important because 
it was a cosign on her ability level. There's so many people that won't let her intern or won't let her volunteer because of her age, or they think, oh, she's just a kid. What can she do? At my first super pod, I met her. I just talked to her and told her that I want to be like her and what, I, and that I think what she did is cool. And we ended up being able to watch Orca together. Pretty much bonded with that person after you've seen whales with them. There's another panel that they have every year called the Scholarly Advocacy Panel. Dr. Visser was one of the people on that panel. I was asking how can I get involved if I'm not old enough to do anything here. And Dr. Visser interrupted me and she said, Lennon, you're not too young to come down to New Zealand with me. Ingrid, she said that when an orca goes on the boat, it's just this, it's not in the shape of an orca, but it's this giant blob. <laughs> No one else had ever given me a chance to to be a researcher, to be a scientist, because I was I was like this tall and it had like no front teeth, and I was just a little kid. That was just like a really profound moment for me. You probably heard one of our residents, J52 Sonic, died since we left. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, like the others, they believe it's a cause to be malnutrition. In that regard, London has been doing a lot of advocacy work. The death of another Southern resident killer whale, the memorial held for the J52 pod, also known as Sonic outside Senator Patty Murray's office. Please do not be distracted by my age, as I am very educated on the issue which I am about to address. Over the last five years, I have devoted my life to the study and protection of the southern resident killer whales. Through my work as a responder for the Whatcom Marine Mammal Serenity Network and ongoing education and research, including dozens of lectures and symposiums put on by the Orca Network, Orca Superpod, and the Center for Whale Research, it has become crystal clear that there is a critical need to save what is left of our endangered southern resident killer whales stop starvation. We have an urgency to deal with food resources for these animals. Yeah. They're dying because of starvation. The little boxes mean that that whale didn't survive. Hopefully said there's a lot of little boxes in J-Pod. We'll, we'll die of a great loneliness of spirit if we don't keep these other creatures around us. We are in a state of emergency. The Earth are starving, and action must be taken now. I have been to the state river dams and seen personally what these giant megaliths of death are doing to our rivers. I have observed the slack water and debris. I have witnessed fish pressed up against the inadequate fish ladders. Together with my family, I witnessed government agencies sucking up fish and dumping them to hot metal dump trucks in the early morning, as not to be seen by the public. Sadly, J-52 is not the only one, but just one in a long line of residents who have died and will soon die if immediate action and emergency measures are taken. This is a direct result of corporate greed and failure of our Washington state government to uphold the Endangered Species Act of 1973, which guarantees protection for these critically endangered whales. You know, we're trying to do, you know, whatever we can do to try to be a voice for these animals. And, and it's hard, you know, I'm not a scientist and London's not a scientist yet. So, so people, you know, wonder, who are you guys? You know, what do you, what do you know about these whales? We have legal and moral obligations to uphold these values and our constitution. When you listed the orcas as endangered under the Endangered Species Act, you made a promise 
a promise to protect them, a promise to preserve their habitat, and a promise that future generations such as my own will be able to look out over the water and have a chance to see these national treasures in their own habitat. It is now time for you as leaders to make good on the promise to protect them and save these poor creatures who are struggling every day for their very survival. Do what is right and remove the four lower snake river dams. The bottom line is that the orca near seat at the table and a portion of the annual salmon harvest set aside for them. Don't let the extinction of the animals be on your conscience. I respectfully ask for your every effort to protect these animals. Is there anybody there that you can talk to that, that you can help and they can help you to get this message out there, London? These dams need to be removed in terms of hydropower for the simple reason that back in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s, the Corps of Engineers was asked to look at these dams and see if they were economically justifiable. The answer was no. And so this, this idea that we need this power is, is just uh, is, is inaccurate. The dams only produce about 3% of the power in the Pacific Northwest, and that's, that's easily eclipsed by the 16% surplus of power in the Pacific Northwest. And then there's people who argue that, oh, we need them for peaking power and stuff like this. They can jump in when something happens, like a power outage someplace else with a, a generator or a turbine. But that's not true. These dams are constrained by the low flows of the Snake River. And so when we need power the most, for instance, in the summertime, it doesn't matter. We got one turbine and that's all you can get out of it and that's running all the time. And so if there's a power uh, demand increase, those dams cannot provide any more power. What I think citizens need to do is they have to contact their local or national elected officials, the governors, the senators, and press on them the need to pressure or tell the Corps of Engineers to breach the Lower Snake River dams in 2018. That doesn't require authorization or legislation from Congress, which would be impossible to get. It just means pick up the phone and call that general in Portland and tell him to get the dam stamp. That we are going to extinct these animals and ruin our ecosystem if we don't. This is not an assault on all dams. The Snake River dams are well known to be the, the salmon killer. They're well known now to be economic disasters and they cost too much. And we've got a hydro system out there that is in desperate need of money. And we've got big dams that produce power at a reasonable rate, but they're underfunded in terms of maintenance and repair. And we need to take the money off the Snake River dams and put it on these other hydropower assets that do make money for the ratepayers and do give us affordable power. And if we don't take care of the Snake River dams, Bonneville Power is going to go broke trying to keep all those dams going. Kids can comprehend a lot more than we think they can. And I don't really think London's a, a special case. We're trying to bring our knowledge from my generation down to these young folks and we really need more Londons to get engaged on this issue, but we need to help them. We're gonna be lucky to be able to look back at her and say, I knew her when. I knew her when she was 10. Every kid has that within them. It's just up to us to nourish that.
has any questions about my research or other things. I don't know if I still have time, but if you guys have questions about my research, you can ask me later. I'm happy to talk. <laughs> <laughs>